The Weaver 303 is the perfect leather sewing machine for those seeking affordability, ease of maintenance and operation, and exceptional performance on lighter weight leather projects. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced leather worker tackling intricate designs, the Weaver 303 offers the flexibility you need, thanks to its speed selector that allows you to choose the perfect stitching speed for your skill level. Join us as we explore the features of this top-selling entry-level leather sewing machine, including its hands-free knee lift, reverse stitching, stitch length adjustments, and more. Begin by positioning the rubber bumpers on the four corners of the oil pan. Then drop it into the stand. Then install the knee lift plunger and rubber sockets. Next you'll want to place the stopper in the hole located behind the oil pan. Then attach the metal hinges to the back of the sewing machine head and carefully position it in the opening with the hinges resting in the rubber sockets. Next we want to add our oil. Tilt the machine head back and pour the included oil into the oil pan, ensuring that it fills between the high and low levels. To install the knee lift, simply attach it to the oil pan with the bracket, tightening the screw to secure. You can adjust the rubber knee pad up or down to accommodate your height. To install the belt, tilt the machine back and slide the belt over the flywheel and onto the speed reducer pulley. Then pull the machine forward. If the flywheel belt seems loose and isn't turning, it may be necessary to adjust the belt tension. To do so, loosen the nut on the speed reducer pulley and lower it until the belt is taut, then retighten. This may cause the belt running from the servo motor to the pulley to slack. To fix this, loosen the nut holding the motor in place and swivel the motor back to retighten the slack. Then retighten the nut. You may also need to adjust the position of the flywheel so that it best lines up with the speed reducer. To do so, loosen the two screws on the wheel and adjust it so that the belt lines up with the speed reducer pulley. Then retighten to attach. Screw the bobbin winder to the table with two screws making sure that it is in line with the belt and that there is about a 1 8 inch to quarter inch gap between them. The belt guard consists of three primary pieces. First, insert the front half of piece two in front of the flywheel. Then insert the back half of piece two behind the flywheel. Next, slide piece three under the back half of piece two and fix it into place with a screw. Before installing piece one, insert nuts into its designated holes using super glue to hold them into place. Insert it into piece two next to the flywheel. Screw piece one to the machine, then fix it to piece two. Finally, slide the tab into place behind the guard. The thread stand needs to be assembled prior to use. Follow the diagram in the manual for specific instructions on how to assemble and fix the thread stand to the table. Next, we will want to install the light. First, plug it into the back of the machine, then fix the power module next to the main power switch. Bring the light around the back of the machine and attach it to the head. You may want to fix the cord to the machine with a small magnet. Since the machine is quiet when turned on, the light also acts as a signal to tell you if the machine is currently powered on or not. The machine comes already threaded. Simply tie your thread from the thread stand to the thread in the machine and pull it through until it reaches the needle bar. To thread your machine without any thread in it, start by pulling it from the thread stand then double loop it through the top guide. Then pull it through the top hole of the first tension disc plate. Loop it back around through the bottom hole, between the tension discs counterclockwise and through the eye at the base of the plate. Pull the thread down between the second set of tensioner discs clockwise. Pull the thread up through the thread guide loop, under the hook, and up through the next guide. Bring the thread up and through the take-up arm, then back down through the next guide. Pull the thread down through the lower guide, then through the needle guide, and finally through the needle eye towards the machine. To replace your bobbin, tilt the machine head back to expose the bobbin case. Remove the bobbin case by lifting the tab. Remove the old bobbin and slide the new bobbin in so that the thread unwinds clockwise. Slide the thread into the slot located on the bobbin case and pull out 8 to 10 inches of thread. Then snap the bobbin case back into place. 
To pick up the bobbin thread, lift the presser foot while holding your top thread and turn the flywheel one complete turn towards you. To use the bobbin winder, run thread through the tensioner discs, then up through the guide. Pull it through the center slot on the winder and attach your bobbin. Wind the thread around the bobbin a few times, then press the bar forward to engage the winder. Apply pressure to the pedal to begin winding. To start stitching, raise the presser foot and insert your material. During your first few stitches, you will want to hold the thread from both the bobbin and the needle behind the foot. Simply use foot pressure on the treadle to begin stitching. To reverse stitch, while the needle is in the down position, push down the reverse stitch lever. The knee lift will raise the presser foot as well as loosen the thread tension, allowing you to easily remove your project once you have finished stitching. A number of adjustments can be made on the machine to fit your stitching style or project. The length of your stitch can be adjusted with the stitch length dial. Push in the metal tab above the dial, rotate to your desired length, and release the tab to lock in your selection. The outside foot pressure can be adjusted by turning the outside foot presser thumb screw clockwise for more pressure or counterclockwise for less pressure. The motor speed can be set with a speed dial on the servo motor. Slower speeds are great for those new to stitching or on more intricate work, while faster speeds may be desirable when working on larger projects. Thread tension controls where the knot appears in your material. If your thread tension is too high, the knot may appear on top of your material while low tension may cause the knot to appear on the underside of your material. To adjust your thread tension, start by adjusting the top thread tensioner. Turn it clockwise to increase tension or counterclockwise to reduce tension. If the issue persists, try adjusting the bobbin case tension by turning the screw on the bobbin case clockwise to increase tension or counterclockwise to reduce tension. For more information or for any questions on the Weaver 303, visit weaverleathersupply.com.